Thank you, Chairman Miller and the committee for inviting me to testify. My name is Jennifer Berglin and I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Bryan Independent School District in Bryan, Texas. We have over 15,000 students in our district of which 71% are considered economically disadvantaged and 61% are considered at risk. I want to tell you about how we use technology to empower these kids to do things they never thought were possible. In 2004, Stephen F. Austin Middle School, which we call SFA, issued laptops to all students and teachers attending the school, which was made possible with funds from a grant through the No Child Left Behind Title II Enhancing Education Through Technology Program. We called this program One Vision, for we had one vision for how we wanted one-to-one -one computing to transform how teachers taught and how students learned. I have a short video that I want to show you that hopefully gives you a brief introduction. In 2004, One Vision was born. It all began when Stephen F. Austin Middle School was chosen as one of 22 middle schools to participate in the Texas Education Agency's Technology Immersion Pilot Project. Each student and teacher received a laptop to enhance learning at school and at home. The state is using this project to study the effects of technology immersion on student achievement as part of a national grant. So with one vision, the future is now. After five years of implementation, the one-to-one -one learning environment, the school, with the one-to-one -one learning environment, the school has increased achievement, a reduction in discipline referrals, had an increase in teacher retention, and increased technology proficiency for both teachers and students. The access to these resources enables the students of SFA to be engaged in their learning. Students use online resources to perform digital experiments, view virtual manipulations for abstract concepts in math and science, discuss topics in social studies using an online chat application, and publish their writing on the internet. One student at SFA used her laptop to begin writing a sequel to the Harry Potter series from the point of view of her favorite character. This wasn't an assignment given to her by her teacher. This was her passion. The laptop just made the writing a little bit easier. Having digital content rather than traditional textbooks enables the students to use all the web tools available to personalize their learning. Students use these to customize their experience on the internet. They create, they collaborate, and they publish in ways that were not possible 10 years ago. The teacher no longer has to possess all the knowledge needed to instruct their students they can truly be the facilitator of learning. In fact, students are able to find their own teacher using the internet. These teachers might be a video demonstrating a physics problem or step-by-step -step instructions on how to divide fractions. This customization of a student's learning has led the students to become more independent learners. When each student is issued a laptop, the learning is extended beyond the school day. One teacher set aside two nights a week to have a live homework chat session. At first, the teacher was the one answering the other students' questions, but soon the teacher was able to back away and let the students answer each other's questions. The research conducted on this project indicates that the students' use of laptops for home learning was the strongest predictor of both reading and mathematics achievement. The findings for home lear learning underscore the important role that individual student laptops play in equalizing the out-of-school learning opportunities for students in disadvantaged families and school situations. <coughs> Before I end, I want to tell you about a small West Texas community whose schools also participated in this project. Floyd Ada ISD is out in way west Texas. They saw such success in their middle school with double-digit gains that they extended their project to their high school. 
As a, re as a result, the students were able to complete 206 college level courses in 2008 for a total of 619 hours. These courses not only helped prepare students for higher education, but also saved parents thousands of dollars since the district covered the cost of the courses and allowed children to see themselves for the first time as college students. One thing that Jerry Vaughn, the superintendent of this um, school district says, if you don't ever start college, you won't ever finish. I wanna end by telling you about a conversation that I had with our track coach several years ago he told me he was about to take an overnight trip to attend a track meet. He only took the top three athletes for each event. So he would have this, the athletes try out the week prior to the track meet. This was, there was this one kid that was trying out for every single event. The coach couldn't figure out why because this kid very rarely showed this much initiative. So the coach said, son, why are you doing this? And this kid looked up at Coach Greeno and he said, coach, I've never been out of town before. <laughs> the digital divide is real. I have kids in my community who have never been out of Bryan. This last year, some of the students at Stephen F. Austin Middle School participated in a unit on NASA. They might not be able to go to Houston, even though it's 90 miles away, but they can go on their laptop using a virtual trip. June 23rd, 2008. We're at the Air and Space Museum and we're discussing the Gemini 4. I can't believe people crammed into that thing. People crammed into that thing? One maybe, but two fully grown adults? I could probably sit in there, but I doubt anybody else could. It must have been uncomfortable. Seats too, apparently. It looks tiny. They would have to bend over a little bit to keep from hitting the switches on the ceiling. Joey says that for a long time, tall people couldn't go into space. The bottom of the lander is really neat. You can see streaks of burned marks. The interesting bit is that the marks converge not at the center of the bottom, but about a foot and a half to one side of the center. Thank you for allowing me to share you my tes testimony. I love sharing our story. It has given me a chance to voice our teachers and how they feel about how this has transformed their teaching and their learning in their school.